Hey, I'm Ryan. This is my brother Daniel, and this is Rolls in the Family. Today, we are talking about all the games that left our collection in the last six months, mm. the back half of the year. This is one of the few videos we do on this channel that's a little bit more a negative rope. leaning with us. Uh, not always super negative. We're, we're pretty picky about games we keep, so sometimes we're getting rid of games oh, that we actually no. think are pretty good. But um, always interesting to hear kind of why did they not stick around for us. Maybe that helps you determine if they're a game you might want to check out. If you decide you disagree with us and you're like, actually, I really want to check that game out, we have all the links in the description hey. below. <laughs> you can yeah. go uh, check it out. You know, Not any games yeah. for everybody. It might be the perfect game. It's true. For Tell you. us why you're wrong. Why we're wrong. Yes. Uh, you can feel free to leave in the comments uh, any games you've gotten rid of recently and why. Uh, it is honestly like like it's always nice to get a, a recommendation on like why you should get a game. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's even more helpful to hear why somebody it didn't work for them. Yeah. And kind of like, oh, okay, that might be similar to me. Or, oh, that I don't think I would have that same problem. Yeah. At least I've found that to Especially be Especially as we get later in this list, because uh, we have some popular games that uh, do. Uh, made it onto the list. So uh, it's, it'll be interesting yeah, so to hear. We're not, we're not being contrarian just for the sake of uh, yeah. clicks or anything. Yeah, we would never just, do that. No, who would? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we've got, what, 13 games to get through? <laughs> Here, um, I think we had a pretty yeah. even. I got rid of seven. You got rid of six. Uh, um, we're going to start yeah. at the lowest rating. We're going to be providing our ratings with all these. So yeah. we'll start at the lowest rated and work Bottom our of the trash can. First. Work our way up. Just and, kidding, uh, Daniel. Yeah, <laughs> Daniel is going to get to start us off with that. Yeah. I, 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 I apologize to every uh, designer of of these games for uh, yes. me. They, they just uh, didn't stick them. around. They just didn't make us. it for us. They're you know great, yeah. great for some of us. Maybe great for you. And that's why you should go check the link below. Um, okay, Ryan, let's start this out with um, the bottom of the barrel for games that I left my collection. Um, and this one more was uh, less on the less on the game itself, really. But I I, I honestly can't even remember how I got it. I, I want to say it came. I in, actually do remember. You I, know? I, okay, yeah. well, let me announce it first. So my number, my, well, it's not my number, my uh, first game is that how i'm saying this Gosh. your lowest trading my lowest game trading game is going to be come going to be fry thief coming in and i'm gonna give fry thief a rating of a five out of ten um and ryan remind me how did i get the yeah we were at a <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the rare moments that we were at a local convention here we went to that uh was it oh, Con that yes. it was game playing stuff and they had some like contest things. I can't remember if it was like a Is that bingo card or it? something and you got to pick something from a selection and this was the game you picked oh my gosh wow yeah. i would have never remembered so i mean that. that is it is an example of like mo usually when we're talking about games on this yeah. list it's games that we bought because we were really thinking Research. they might stick yeah. around yeah so and like, then we're getting this is a little different yeah, yeah this one's starting at a you know it's not a not an advantage coming to the collection um and so i i I'd be honest, I think I only tried it maybe a couple times, um, but really kind of simple two-player game of you got these uh, fries and ketchup and you're playing these cards kind of back and forth between your opponents trying to, you know, score points here. Um, it's been so long since I've even played it. It's been on, it's been, I haven't, I had never actually, it was kind of forgot it was in my collection. And so it, it wasn't on the last cold list, partially from a, uh, just uh, forgetting you found uh, it drop behind the I, shelf yeah, yeah. somewhere. I was like Whoa. behind this game, and I'm like, wait a second, Frithy's still here. Um, so you know, cute little game. My wife and I tried it, but it just, you know, five out of ten. It just didn't. There was there was nothing in it that was going to keep us uh, coming back uh, for more. And and I not I don't think it's trying to do a lot. And and for you know mm. someone that enjoys just a, a nice little simple kind of back and forth card game could be good but we got a lot a lot of other games that uh that my wife and I enjoy playing together um and so it's uh tough to make the cut sometimes and so uh, you know no I don't I don't want to hate on a uh, fry thief too much you know I'm sure it's a yeah. I'm sure it's a good one for for you for fry lovers out there yes yeah, all those fry lovers <laughs> yeah nice so, yeah there you go yeah. ryan i think you got the next one too actually you're, you're the yes a little more harsh back. this round Gosh, i know mm. i'm a i'm a tough cookie yeah. um so coming in now at my uh the next game i got rid of is gonna go to odin's ravens uh and i'm gonna be giving odin's ravens a 5.5 out of 
10. Uh, this is, again, another two-player game uh, that uh, actually had, you know, it has some interesting things of it's kind of a this racing game where you you lay out all these cards that uh, and you and your uh, opponent are on kind of all the cards have two kind of sides to them. And so there's like a track going down on one side and then you got, so you got to go down and then you got to turn around and come back the other way. And like both of you have to do that and you're kind of racing. Uh, but all of the game, when you play an environment, you have these environment cards in your hand that match the, the symbols out there. And whenever you play a card, you get to move um, as far of that environment that's in front of you. And so really what you're trying to do is like align because you have ways to manipulate the cards for the tracks. So you're kind of like manipulating the track to try to get similar environment cards that match so you can move faster um, and whatnot. And so there's some special card things. They call them these low-key cards and whatnot that do a lot of the kind of manipulation and stuff like that. And, you know, my wife and I played it uh, a few times. I think she got to play it with some other people and, uh, and you know, had a, had a decent time and whatnot. Um, I think thinking about it, I it didn't give me any like exhilarating race feel, which I think can sometimes be hard to do uh, in a game. You know, it's one of the things that I think we've enjoyed about like a game, like, you know, heat pedal to the metal was like, we very much get that like exhilarating racing feel, which is sometimes hard to get. Um, I was even thinking about, you know, I have a, a quest for El Dorado and you, you get a little bit of that mm-hmm. kind of, uh, you know, can make a big move. Yeah, like a big move and, and and exciting moments. I think that's kind of critical in a game that's racing, and maybe just didn't see that a lot um, in this one. But it's got some clever kind of manipulation of the cards and whatnot. But that's why it is going to be a five point five for me. But enough of me hating on board games, yeah. Ryan. I need to give you some uh, some yeah, room, yeah. so I'm going to pass it over to you. Well, and I think unlike your two examples so far, which was like. Got as a prize at a convention, and I think you got Owen's Ravens okay. as a gift. Yes, right? this was a wedding gift. I want to say. I don't think yeah. anybody gave me board games at my wedding. Yes, no, it was but a, it's hard. It's it, hard to well, be the person I, that's yeah, gifting I, I kind us of, games. Well, I will say, I uh, I kind of hope the people who gave it to us aren't watching because uh, you know yeah. you always feel bad if someone you know gives you something and then you know it happens. It does happen. But mine know? is not like that. Mine is a game no. that I researched. I bought thinking this was going to be a really nice uh, addition to the collection. Mm. Something that really uh, draws us to games sometimes is like really wide player counts. Like, ooh, this could be good in a lot of situations. Yeah. This is one that I was hearing a lot of stuff about being good really from like two to eight players. Um, Kind of in the roll and write genre, but has a much different kind of feel than a lot of other ones. This is Long Shot the Dice Game. Mm. And this one was definitely getting some buzz and I was pretty excited about it. And I was like, this just sounds great of a short game where it's a horse race and everybody's kind of doing the roll and write thing of, you know, filling out your sheet. But then the rolls are actually like doing the horse race. Mm -hmm. Um, And admittedly, my first couple plays of this, I had a really good time. Mm -hmm. But this was one that burned bright and burned out hard quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a few reasons why. Um, I think one of the biggest things is the game arc felt like it was going to be almost exactly the same every time. Like there's kind of this pattern of at the beginning of the game, most players are going to try to acquire a horse. Cause if you can get one of the horses, you get the horse's ability. Mm-hmm. And so you don't want to, there to be like none left for you. Yeah. So it's kind of this initial, like everybody get goes a horse the one time I played and that was <laughs> gets the horses. Um, and then like, you know, you're kind of doing this making rows and columns and the little concessions thing to get bonuses, but the bonus options are all, all you know, the same each time. And you're placing these bets on horses to ultimately Mm -hmm. hope that those horses win. Another thing I really didn't like about it was um, some of those bonuses were like, move a horse forward to, or move a horse backwards to, or move Mm -hmm. two forward one. And what ends up happening is just like, people are just like doing and undoing each other's work because like, obviously I've bet on these horses, you've bet on different horses. And yeah. I didn't find that fun. Like, as we <laughs> literally are just like, I move it forward to, and then the next one is like, I move it back to, and it was like we're just like stalling, doing yeah. nothing, and it just yeah. kind of felt weird. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it kind of ended up just. I, I guess another thing I didn't love about it is you roll, and then everybody's going to use this result. So it's like great simultaneous play around the table with eight up to eight players. That'd be great, but it's not quite simultaneous play. 
because the buy a horse action, you need to go in order to know if someone has bought before you. Mm -hmm. As well as as you start getting some of these abilities where you move horses, you need to know if somebody does it before you. So it's like, oh, everybody can start thinking, but you really do have to go once around the table. And so I would have groups where, you know, you'd hit somebody who really is kind of stuck thinking and it Mm -hmm. kind of like holds up the whole game. So it feels like it like loses one of the big selling points of these types of games of like, hey, everybody can do it at once. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that also caused the game to outstay its welcome a little bit. It was a little longer, some of the sessions than I would have liked it to be. Um, so yeah, one that didn't really land for me the way that it seemed to land for a lot of the reviewers that I was seeing, um, when I was researching the game. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, there you go. It was, you know, all right. Six out of 10. I want to say, so I just played it once. I believe we were Mm -hmm. on a family vacation, played it. And I very much agree with your sentiment that. Well, I didn't even really have the high first play. Like I, I played it that one time, yeah. and and after it, I mean, I think I was pretty honest with you. I was like, that I was not a huge fan of it. Um, yeah, and that was probably my worst play, yeah, just maybe, the yeah. dynamic. But I think you know it's for a lot of the reasons we're talking about of why. Totally. Yeah. So there you go. Long shot the dice game. Did you? Uh, I don't even know if you ever said what you rated it, but uh, what what are you going to? I rate? did, but I'll you say did? it again. Six out of ten. Okay. Well, then I just wasn't listening. So go there. You yeah. go. You know, I usually tune out when you're talking. To yeah, you, so. yeah. <laughs> I, know. I just, I just, I do the, uh, you know, you know, freeze. Uh, I freeze my screen so it looks like I'm paying attention. And then I just go and you know. Yeah, you're just on like a little video loop, so I think you're still engaged. <laughs> yeah. You laugh every once in a while. It's key. Okay, Ryan. Uh, the next game that uh, I got rid of that um, I'm going to be giving a 6 out of 10 is going to go to Colt Express. Uh, I've had Colt Express now actually for quite some time. And again, I played this, it once with you and it was a while ago. Yeah, I was going to say, I think this is one that was like, I just got a crazy deal off, you know, Facebook Marketplace and I heard about it and heard about, you know, uh, seemed like kind of a fun uh, kind of group group game and whatnot mm-hmm. and and this one obviously i think from a it's got a really cool kind of visual uh presentation of you got this you literally have this you know 3d train in front of you with your you know characters and you're uh kind of moving you know there's levels and you're you know able to move you know up and down and whatnot um but and and thinking back on like man gosh it's been a while since i've played cult express um because it's all about kind of playing i want to say play, yeah, maybe we'll work together <laughs> you on all this, like Ryan. play cards simultaneously yeah. right and then it's like you all res- you like resolve yeah, you resolve the you resolve yeah you all are playing the cards and you resolve the round you kind of see how it rolls so it's actually it's got a cool kind of like action that happens of like okay what how mm-hmm. does it all resolve and whatnot um and you know you're kind of you can you know attack each other you can go and try to grab treasure and stuff um i think you know that part of it of kind of the resolving it all is like fun but also a little too just chaotic maybe for yeah. what i was where o- almost when you're making your decision you start to get this feeling of like I don't it know. It almost doesn't matter what <laughs> like, I do. I, like, I, gosh, they, I have like no idea really what's going to happen. So I guess I'll just try this and hope for the best. And so yeah. your decisions start to not feel very important. And so that yeah, I was, feel like you have to really get into just the fun of how yeah. it's unfolding. I remember when I was playing it, I think I had a similar feeling of like, I can see why certain people would really like this. Oh, it's just yeah. not really my. I think I think the kinda... right group would could really mm-hmm. get like if you get super into this because it does have that like fun action like ah, just craziness yeah. feel and like a kind of a take that you know kind of if you get your group kind of has that that dynamic and whatnot um, but I did I just didn't get selected a lot for you know it kind of. Um, it didn't get picked a lot for kind of, you know, the right situation, which again, when games, that, that's always the big sign for us is when a game needs to leave is when it's like, huh, why yeah. am I never picking this one? Yeah, yeah. Even when I have the right, like the, per, like if you ask me what's the perfect group for this and I'm still not yeah. picking it. Okay. Well then, then maybe it's time to go. So that was why after all the, these many years, you know, it's not a bad game by any means. I could totally play a game Colt Express again and, and, you know, have a, I think have a decent time, but 
yeah, it was it was time for it, time for it to go. You know what I'm saying, Ryan? I do. That's that's like the definition of a six out of ten. That is a it's like I'd still play I was just it. I'd have an all right time, but reading our definition <laughs> of a six. No. Well, speaking of six out of ten, my oh, Ryan, next you one. Six. You sick freak. <laughs> my next one is the uh, game best transition 10, ever, which I give a six. <laughs> I glance over at the lets and I'm just like, oh my god. Uh, oh, it's good. Ryan, you are uh, so, so the game good. is called 10 T E M. Uh, I'm giving this a six out of 10. Uh, this is a game that's kind of in the genre of filler card game kind of based around push your luck. Um, I would p- kind of compare it to something like no thanks. It's actually got some similarities to no thanks mm. where you're uh, bidding to try to get, you know, Previously get cards. Cold game. I actually ha- currently have no, you thanks. got it again. I do, yeah. I mean, it was cold. It was cold we, like twelve years ago, and then I we, see. It we need a list now of games that Ryan's cold and has now reacquired. Yeah, we'll we'll do. Yeah, yeah. and then well, games that Ryan's that's cold a good segue reacquired, for, and then cold. yeah, that's a good segue for later on. This <laughs> okay, list. yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, but I was gonna say it's like no th- no thanks has the thing where you're acquiring cards and like you want to get ones that are sequential because then only the lowest number counts and you're trying to avoid mm-hmm. points. Ten actually has like that almost exact same mechanism. It's got a little bit of um, similar to the game push, where on your turn you're going to be flipping like cards push. and deciding how you want to go. I do like push as well. In fact, push is staying in my collection while ten is leaving. Uh-huh. And I think a big reason why is ten takes those types of games and add makes it a little bit more complex. It has this whole thing that you're not just flipping the colored number cards, but you flip these cards that sometimes just show the little stones. They're like just the black tokens. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, if you flip those, they actually subtract from the total. So it actually helps you to not bust because it's if you go over 10 or something. But it also means that you're going to be like giving your opponents more of those tokens Mm -hmm. um, if more of those are there. But then you can also bust if you get too many of those. So it's like making your total go negative, but if that goes over 10, then it busts. So just that in and of itself is a little hard to explain and get you know yeah. the group to all kind of understand, which is not really what you want for that type of game. Like you want <laughs> yeah. it to be like, this is pretty understandable. Right. Right. And then it also means that as you're going, it doesn't just mean like I need to add a total. You're like going back and forth. It's like, okay, six, nine, okay, minus five, we're back to four. Mm-hmm. And like, if you ever forget where you're at, you have to like rethink it through. Now, I tend to do a lot of math, like in my gaming and always enjoyed math. So I maybe didn't like, you know, have too much of a problem with that, but I could tell other people around the table were kind of like, oh man, what are we at? Like, what's this? It's just like, it feels unnecessary. And so for me, the additional complexity and kind of friction that was added into this style of game, it didn't feel like there was really any payoff above mm. these other games that I like in that genre. Yeah. I felt like I was getting almost the same payoff and I'm like, well, if I'm getting the same payoff, I'm going to pick the game that's easier to explain quicker right. to play. Um so it's an interesting it's got some interesting ideas but for what I want in that style of filler game, um I mean really any game if you're adding complexity and I'm not getting don't feel like I'm getting like a big gain mm-hmm. from that complexity, that's like, you know, always a bad thing yeah totally um, so yeah played it a few times but ultimately felt like i had some ones i liked better in that niche in my collection did i play this one you did we played it once with our family uh at wow. our parents house yeah it's not been that memorable good thing you're getting rid of it man yeah because <laughs> i can't remember it at all yeah okay well good god that yeah, and it very quickly here. got to the point you know there's always the thing of like how many times do i try a game mm-hmm. you know to see but it got to the point where you know, you played a few times and it's like, we don't get to game that much. So do you really want to use a gaming session to play a game that you're pretty sure yeah. isn't going to stick around? Yeah. And it how, was many ta- how many times do you, chances do you get a game? And so I, I was know. like, okay, I, th- I think I know where this is headed. Yeah. So yes, 10 gets a six. Another game that gets a six for me. And this is a game, talk about games that maybe are got a lot of hype in the last year. Mm-hmm. Um, this is Disney Lorcana, which is Disney's big trading card game. Now, many board gamers, you know, avoid trading card games like the Plague uh-huh. because it's kind of the old uh, 
model of buy blind boosters and you know it can be a big money hey and we were big Yu-Gi-Oh fans back in the day however yeah we do have a history with trading card <laughs> games i have a soft spot in my heart i do enjoy those style of games and i've enjoyed like a lot of fantasy fights living card games we enjoy key forge which we isn't do. that but it's kind of the same genre of gameplay mm-hmm. um and so I was intrigued by Lord Kana because I've got young kids. We like Disney. They're watching mm-hmm. Disney stuff. If you look up some Lord Kana stuff, the art is all great. Like the, they did a really good job with just like, nice. you know, and so it's like, okay, there's like a world where this could be kind of cool. Like, and with mm-hmm. kids getting older to have a collection of these cards that we can, you know, build and play decks and maybe a little lighter style of game. Um, I don't know if I said, but I'm giving Lord Kana a six out of 10. Um, played a few games of this, mainly with the starter decks with a few extra cards that I had gotten with it. Um, and it has some interesting ideas. It's pretty vanilla. Like it doesn't hugely innovate on like the dueling trading card game formula. The big thing in Lorcana is every turn you can turn one of your cards into ink and that like increases your ink well, and then you exhaust your ink to play cards. So it's kind of got that ramping that something like, uh, I haven't played much Hearthstone, but I think that has it. I know Marvel Snap that I played uh, for a little yeah. bit. These are digital games. I'm that fans I'm of both to. those. Um, have kind of the ramping thing that it's like the first round, you're only going to be able to play like a level one card, but the second round, you'll be able to play a level two card mm-hmm. um, if you're getting the ink. And so it was kind of cool. My, probably my least favorite thing about it was like just the way the math works in this game. You only draw one card per turn, but then you can ink one card per turn Mm. and then you can play cards. So if I ink a card and play a card, but I've only drawn one card, like I'm going to have one less card than I used to have. And so what I found when we were playing, like is typically you want to be inking so that you can play better cards, Mm -hmm. but you're kind of just losing your hand and almost getting to the point that like, well, whatever I draw, I'm going to play. And just the decision space really shrunk to where it was like, man, I just do not feel like I'm making very interesting decisions. It just feels like the game's putting these chains on me of like, (laughs) I just don't get to play with a lot of the cards. You don't like that feeling? Um, You know, the game wasn't doing enough other things that were interesting to really like drive that. Now, I'm sure if you get into the game more and you build decks strategically, you can probably build decks that more intentionally get more card draw and do some of this. Mm. But I was just like, you know what? The only way this was really going to stick around is if I really li- liked it and was like, oh, this could be really fun mm-hmm. to play some of the kids. And because I was lukewarm on it, it's almost a little bit of relief. It's like, whew, dodged a trading card game that like would have, <laughs> you know, because if you get into it, you're going to yeah, be tempted. They, they release know. new sets for it, I think, quarterly. So yeah. four times a year, there's going to be a completely new set of cards. I have a, um, yeah, yeah, that's, I have a new mantra, I feel like, when it comes to board games. I will not invest or i will not if a game isn't great for me in its starting form i'm not gonna like i don't want a game that says go buy everything and then it'll be great like i yeah like i want a game that's really fun right now and then it's like okay yeah getting more stuff of course because this is already amazing but i am just so weary of games that say oh we'll just wait until you get everything and then it'll be you know so yeah, and so I, you know, it's, I'm glad I got to try it. I'm kind of glad it didn't stick around so that I don't have to put more money into it. Um, hey, there and, you go. I, and honestly, I mentioned Keyforge. That was part of what I was thinking when I was playing. I was like, man, comparing this to something like Keyforge, where I feel like every turn, because you always redraw up to six in Keyforge, and it's always an interesting decision of yeah. which house do I pick, and I want to play as many cards as possible. Um, and I was coming off of recently playing a, self-organized Keyforge tournament thing that was on one of our previous top playlists. Really? And so it was just like, when would I ever, I would never want to play this game over Keyforge. So like it would only <laughs> be, it would only be if I feel like I'm able to get it to the table with somebody that maybe wouldn't play Keyforge, yeah. which is true with the Disney IP and it was an true. easier game, but not enough there for me. So leaves the collection with a, a, a six out of 10 stamped on it. Big fat six out of ten. Nice. Um, We're out of the sixes now. We're out of the sixes, and I would say, Ryan, I don't know about you, but I feel like this we're we're picking a a jump here um, to I would say at least for me. Now we're starting to get into games that really I think are good 
games yeah. and and ones that left not because I um don't think that not because I think they're bad games, but rather just there were either some specific things or even just a, a you know f- just fit within my collection, or even sometimes a, a better game comes along. Uh, so mm-hmm. my uh, next game is one that uh, I believe I backed. Did it was it a Kickstarter? I want to say I think I think I, I think I backed on Kickstarter way back, uh, and it, it did pretty well. And uh, and and have enjoyed it because my uh, uh, my wife especially, but both of us enjoy polyomino games. So I've always been kind of uh, ex- you know find, trying to find different ones that that work well for us. And so this was early on in the polyomino games that we really kind of went in on. And this is this going to go to Isle of Cats, um, which I'm going to be getting giving Isle of Cats a seven out of ten. Um, Isle of Cats, I almost feel like when I talk about it, I have to talk about two uh, separate games because they actually have a family mode as well that I played, I think, equally as much as I played the standard yeah. mode um, because it actually made it really accessible. Like, I played it with uh, people in our family, you know, even people like Ryan and... Uh, <laughs> even me. <laughs> no. Um, but... Uh, but anyways, Isle of Cats, you know, it's uh, so you got kind of your ship that you're draft. It's got kind of your your um, draft in these cats that you're placing, you know, sh- their shapes and you're placing into your ship and whatnot. You're got kind of car drafting going on and all that sort of stuff with, you know, uh, you've got these fish that you're using to kind of kind of the tension of the game is do you you're using the same resources of fish to buy cards as well as buy cats to go into the the uh, onto your board and so figuring out like what do you spend on what um and then in those cards there's like objectives and all that sort of stuff um and so it was it was honestly a a, a really good game that that we played quite a few times and, and had a good time with um i think there were a few just specific things that really um kind of I don't know, rub me wrong or, or just maybe didn't fill exactly what we were looking for um, in this niche. And and the first thing is with what I realized that my wife and I love most about the polyomino uh, element in a game is when it's really tight. Like we love when it's like mm-hmm. we are just snugly fitting shapes together. You and work just, yourself into yeah, a corner. Exactly. And to... It's like, how am I going to make this work all together? And we love that. And this is why my city, I mean, has been just a hit with us is because that is what that game is. Unfortunately, that's just not, I thought, I kind of thought that's what Isle of Cats was, but you really quickly realize it's not. The ship is, you're not filling the whole ship. Yeah. You're, you're never, and, and so, you're not like tight. I mean, you can focus on a, on a corner and tightly fit stuff, but if you want to do well, I mean, cause there's all these rooms you are got to try to fill. You'll oftentimes just like bolt, you know, make us beeline across the ship mm-hmm. to then fill another section. But there's not this like really tight constraint that I think I was looking for in a game um, like that. Um, and so there was that. I also, uh, didn't love the objective cards in that game um, because they were in the cards that you're drafting. So just throughout the game, as you're going, objective cards are coming up and you can buy them. But I find they just weren't that exciting for me. And then as the game gets later, like a lot of the objectives cards are like, yeah, well, that can't that. I mean, that just can't even do anything with that anymore. or That's not going to do anything. And um, and then even like, there's public objectives, and so then why would I play a public objective? It can score for either of me or my opponents. Like, I don't know. It just, that felt weird to me. And so there were just like, it's like the game was really fun, but there was just these few things that I found myself rarely being like, yeah, I want to play Isle of Cats right now. And yeah. and it's in that level where we've got to, you know, I mean, this is... This is where you could play a wingspan. You could play a yeah, kind Quacks of Quedlinburg, way. those type of games. And so you're starting to get into some of our, our favorites up there. And so actually replaced this one um, and have played it a few times now with World Wonders. That's a, a recent one that came out. And that one, having played it a couple of times, definitely hits that tighter polyomino um, game more. Yeah, tu- so, tune in in six months to see if you get rid of World Wonders. <laughs> because I'm a... 
I'm uh, hey. I'm, I'm just constantly axing stuff. So you know, the, it, I feel like at least with our philosophy with games, the bigger the collection gets, the harder it is for new games to like find yeah. their place and hold on. It's true. Right? Yeah. But the collection. Yeah, I remember playing yeah. Isle of Cats with you one time. I remember liking it. I remember feeling. Like it kind of just felt like a mishmash of kind of a bunch of modern mechanisms yeah. that kind of like it didn't feel like really cohesive to me. It was kind of yeah. like, OK, there's some fun stuff going on here, but I, I don't remember feeling compelled yep. Yep. to play it again. So. Yep. And so that's why it's getting a seven out of ten for me. Nice. My next of, game. Yeah, here we go, right? <laughs> my next story. game I'm pulling for the second time. Uh, <laughs> I want see you I, know, wonder, I wonder if it'll ever get cold for a third time. Yeah. <laughs> so there's times when uh this is true of life in general, where your memory wow. of something right. isn't necessarily representing representative of how the thing really was. Mm. And so this happens sometimes when we look back on some of the games we played when we first got into the hobby and enjoyed. And what ended up happening with us is we had some of these games in our initial collection that got just hammered with plays because they were the only games we had. I mean, one of the first orders we ever made was Dominion and Small World. And we played those two games I mean, so much because it was, it was like it, you, you go to the closet to pick a game. Do you want to play Dominion? Do you want to play small? You know, Ryan, <laughs> life was so much easier. Was now, simpler, whenever yes. we now, it takes us like 10 minutes to pick yeah, what to half play. The game day. Nah. Yes. So what ends up happening is we played them so much that when we expanded our collections, a lot of those games ended up getting sold off because we were kind of burnt out on a lot of them, even though we still enjoyed some of them. Well, now, 10 years later, you look back on some of them and you're like, Actually, now that I haven't played it in 10 years, that game was fun and like maybe mm-hmm. it could fill a niche. This is an example. I mentioned it already as being one of our first games. This is Small World. Small World is a game that in the last year I was thinking back on it and I was like, you know what? I don't really have like a light accessible area control game. And it's got the whole thing with the variability of the powers and the races that get mm-hmm. lined up every game. And I was like, I man, like that, that with the expansions, like that, that is just a good time. And it could fill something that I don't really mm-hmm. have. Um, and so I picked it up again and I played it once and I had a good time, but I also just realized suddenly some of the reasons why maybe it left the collection, <laughs> you know, and I, where I maybe wasn't remembering that quite yeah. clearly. Um, it's a good game. And I actually think there's certain groups that would really, really love small world. Yep. There's a few things for me, um, that kept it from sticking around a second time. <laughs> uh, one of it is in, in that style of game. It doesn't have a lot of exciting moments. Yeah. Once you yep. pick your race and you're expanding on the map, most of that is deterministic. It's like you need two more than what the tiles in the region to take over the mm-hmm. region. And so you kind of have to decide where you're going to go, but it's all deterministic except for the final reinforcement role to try to go into a last region but it's yeah it's a little extra thing yeah and so you know most of that gameplay isn't like exciting it's more kind of just like there's some interesting decisions about how you go about it then one of the fun things is getting a new race and picking like which one do i want to go for that only happens a few times a game and the other thing is when you have all this expansion content that's great with the combinations, but it also means almost every time you bring up a combination, you're having to check the rule book on like, yeah. how does this work? Now, yes, that would be alleviated if I played it a bit and got to the point where I felt like I just knew them all and I can explain them to people. Mm-hmm. But it isn't exactly like, you know, I was thinking this is going to be in a niche of bring out kind of as a just very welcoming game that about anybody can play. And I was realizing it actually is kind of a lot of information to be like, mm. you have six races to pick from, each have two abilities there's basically 12 things i've told you that you need to remember what they do because the iconography isn't like gonna Mm -hmm. it's like a little reminder but you do really have to remember what i told you um so yeah i think it just was like okay this is fine but i think if i was to i think i can find another game that can maybe fit in that niche that is a little bit more exciting maybe has more dice rolling in the combat or something Mm -hmm. like that um yeah. I'm glad I played it again. It was fun to play like such a nostalgic, what's become a nostalgic game. Yeah. Like I looked at my board game tracking and it was like 13 years between plays. Are you serious? Of Small World. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and so it was fun to do, but yeah, yeah, thinking on it after the play, I was like, you know what? 
I don't think I'm going to be wanting to get it to the table yeah. and that'll, that'll do it. So se- I, I don't remember if I said this rating, but I, I'm rating hey, Small World a 7.5. Sorry, I got all nostalgic <laughs> and uh, I forgot to read it. 7.5, 7. 7.5 out of no, 10. No, I, uh, I totally agree with you actually about the, the, when I think about what's the most fun part of Small World for me, it's getting a new race. Yeah. Like, the the excitement of what's the pairing you're gonna get, you know, but then you're totally right. Where like the actual, I mean, conquering isn't that exciting. It's yeah. cool to see like your race do well, I guess, but there's not a lot of exciting moments in it. And yeah, it's like an example of a game that's like got cool mechanics, but lacks maybe some of that excitement that I think a game. You can also get really screwed in that game. Like if somebody decides, actually, I'm gonna just like mow through your area, <laughs> and suddenly you're like. I can either go into decline with like nobody or like, yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, but 7.5. I, I do. Like I said, I do think the right group yeah. could really have a great time with small world. I just wasn't going to say. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Let us know in the comments over under five years before Ryan Cole's small world for a third yes. time. <laughs> you know, nostalgia gets nostalgia you, gets you, Ryan. Hey. Uh, but this time I'll have video evidence. I can go back and watch like, why did I get rid hey. of this? Do you remember what I was texting you the other day about almost picking up a killer bunny set again? Uh, a little while yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, that's so, a very similar. I'm telling you, nostalgia. When I think about killer bunnies, our, our first board game we really got into, you know, it, nostalgia can get you, Ryan. Some, some found memories. Okay, Ryan, let's move us along. Uh, next, yeah, this game, next one is not an old game. For not you. an old game. No, very recent. Uh, one that I uh, actually got from a uh, miniature market. I was in their store and. It was on a steep discount because it was missing a critical piece, but I f- found a way of replacing it. Wait, are you it. getting rid of it? Because <laughs> Yeah, I was like, wait a second. Um, no, I was able to replace that and actually still get it for a pretty solid uh, discount there. But uh, this is going to go to Massive Darkness 2, which I'm going to be giving a 7.5 out of 10. And, oh, this one was sad because... The, like the type of just game that it is, I was hoping for like a nine. Like I was mm-hmm. thinking, man, this could really be up there for me of one of my favorites. And, uh, and I got it to the table a few times and pretty quickly realized that this wasn't what I was, uh, uh going after. And probably part of it's my fault. Ryan does a lot better research on stuff than, than I do. I'm very impulse. Just, yeah, let's just get it and try it out. Um, that said, so ma- I thought you would like this game from the research I had done. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I know, you know, Dice Tower had said uh, Tom Vassell really liked it, it yeah. and whatnot. And so it looks really cool. Um, after playing it, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, it is a, it is a cool game. I mean, it's got sweet miniatures. It's got this awesome, just like the characters. I also give them that the characters very different. I mean, they play just wildly different. And so that's yeah. really fun of like this uh, just what you're doing with your character is so different than what your partner's doing and how you work together and move through uh, yeah. to do it. Like, and that all was amazing. I love that. The problems I had um, with it, one was just, it was just a lot lighter than I was wanting it to be. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted, like I loved the characters and all that. I just wanted a little bit, heavier of it like a step up in like the heaviness of the experience and it a little bit fell into what if you watched our previous uh i think it was in my previous cold video um arcadia quest that left my collection as well Mm -hmm. very similar vibe to that game of kind of just falling back into you know sometimes they call it like the beer and pretzels type game of just your and and that can be great for some groups like that's it can Mm -hmm. be exactly what you want um for me, usually when I'm getting the a group together that is going to play a game like this, we want something just a little bit more, more. thinky than than yeah. maybe it was. Um, and so there was that element to it. And then along with that, and it just was also easier than I was hoping. And I know with, you know, there was, I did some research on like ways that you can, you know, try to tune the difficulty and pe- there was some like variance people would kind of come up with but in general the consensus was yeah this is just an easier cooperative game 
and that's always hard for us. I mean, Ryan and I have a buy. We do so like our we like our cooperative games, games hard. Yeah. I mean, Ryan, uh, the last game here on the that we're gonna be talking about today is an example of that. that um, uh, we we like them hard. We like the challenge because man, it makes our victories like so exciting. And I, I remember both games I played, we won and we never even sweat it. And it was yeah. kind of, and th- and that's like really a letdown because <laughs> the fun is this like tension of oh you know we you know how did mm-hmm. we figure it out and push through and so um, we love when there's points in our cooperative games where things really do feel kind of hopeless oh yes because like when you win after <laughs> feeling hopeless yes. like or even just get close to winning oh, like it's man. just a great feeling i know yeah it's it's so true and so i just realized that um and, and i think with that this is a game that for you know we we're talking about games that you can expand um i mean this is one that that just incentivizes you to go buy everything for it mm-hmm. and so i similar to you when you were talking about uh uh which Lorcana. one was that when you which one were you saying that about well, i was get, saying Lorcana, like you're relieved oh, you don't Lorcana, have to spend yeah, all the yeah. money on it yeah yeah how i i was able to save some money by uh get, yeah. cutting it off uh at the head and and not to uh, there you not, go. Not going down deep, but I like, man, it just was disappointing because yeah, I was I was mm-hmm. really, uh, really thinking this one could could be a hit, but it just kind of just kind of fell flat. Good game, seven point five, but but not great for me. Yeah. All right, my next one is also a recent release, one that when I saw the early reviews for it, I initially was like, "Ooh, this is one my wife might like," which my wife tends to like a little bit lighter games. Um, one of the games she really likes is uh, That's Pretty Clever or Gone yeah, Strong Clever. She'll be on the channel Lots soon. Lots of comboing on the, uh, you know, that get something that gives you something. This game has that element and I was like, ooh, she might like that mm-hmm. piece of it. Um, got it and played it a few times with actually different groups and kind of decided, you know what, I don't know actually if she would be as big on it. This is Mila Fury by Reiner Knizia. Um, it's a game where you're basically drafting cards and whatever card you play is going to let you play these little transparent diamonds in one of the areas on the board. And it's kind of this point salad thing where each area kind of scores in its own way. Like one of them, you play a diamond and score for every con- diamond in your contiguous group. So you're trying to like make a big group of them, but other ones you like have to, um, have had the, like the right number to play the next one, or you're like have to match a symbol or something. Um, mm-hmm. And it actually is a very fun little rhythm of, you know, picking it and then everybody resolves in order and you get these and it fills throughout the game. And it's, you know, we like card drafting. So it's lots of just like, ooh, nice decision, mm-hmm. nice decision. Yep. Um, I think, and I did, I did enjoy it. I think I realized some, something about myself that I've known about myself, but this like further confirmed oh, it. psychology of Rick Yes, Ryan. is if a game doesn't have a piece of exciting variability in it, it's really got to knock it out of the park with like how much I love the core system and re- revisiting that core system. And there's games that stay in my collection because I love that core system so much. This was one that, you know, there really isn't much exciting variability. Like you draft cards, so the card drafting will be different, but it's the same feel every game, the kind of things you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just don't think there was enough that was exciting me to like have it be a game I keep around that doesn't have that type of variability. Mm. So that definitely was a big part of it. Um, It also had a little bit of weirdness. So like it has each section has a way that you can get like a bonus turn. So you like, if you surround a certain thing, you get to take a bonus card from like this common row. And sometimes you can like chain that, like, because you could get something that then gives you another Mm -hmm. bonus turn. The thing is most of these bonus turn, things aren't going to happen until a few rounds into the game because you need to get some stuff out there to surround things or do things. Mm -hmm. But when you're, when there's the opportunity to get them, like somebody could play in this place to do it. It is so valuable to be going first because you all draft cards and reveal, but then you start with the start player. So Mm -hmm. they're going to get first pick to get like this, this spot. And so I actually found, I feel like the game has a little bit of a flaw in how it handles turn order because there's only like five rounds in the whole game. So say you're playing with like four players. So if you were the first player in the first round, I think you're at a huge disadvantage because 
you have first pick at the point where there aren't any of those opportunities to get mm. these big turns. But whoever is going third, the round, the third round going to be the start player, they might have, you know, all kinds of opportunities um, because they get to be the first card played that entire round. Um, and so I thought that was a little weird. Like, it just felt a little like, wow, it feels like you got a way better position just because you were seated mm. a little bit differently at the table. Um, so I had a good time with it. Uh, played it a few times. Yeah, I got um, to play that one. But it was going to either... It also do, isn't a game that I think would play well two players. So it was like, okay, I'm probably never... We're not, I'm not going to play it with my wife. Two player. Mm-hmm. Is it one that... And then it, it, it fell a little bit into the like, even if my wife liked it, I don't know that I like it enough <laughs> to be excited about yeah. like and like yeah. it, and there's games that we definitely keep that you know she likes more than I do and I enjoy it because like you know it's one that we can play together uh mm-hmm. but yeah it just wasn't especially with it not being a two player game or a good two player game yeah uh, it kind of gets to that point where uh you know like we've been saying with others where it's it's like a good game but you're also never going to choose it you know? Yeah, and yeah, it's, it's it, hard. It, how? What's the length of this one? I'm I'm trying to. Write, it's pretty looked, snappy, actually. It's like thirty but, to sixty minutes, depending on the number of players. Oh, okay. and that was actually an advantage of the game. That is an it, advantage. It so, so you that actually is more. I was for some reason thinking you, it might have been. Oh, got you know, if it's going over that hour point, that's a yeah. Tough, I wouldn't say it out. Said it well. It's welcome. I think there just wasn't a lot that excited me to go back to it. Yeah, um, that's fair. So, wow. Okay, Ryan. You got a you got a popular one here next. Oh, in fact, boy. we get, we got we got two yeah, two bangers where, in a row where here. All the un smashing smash the unsubscribe yeah. button. You know, at least drop us a like before you smash the yeah. unsubscribe button. You know, yeah, good little charity, us. little charity like. Um, yeah. So my la- uh, I think the last game for me that I got rid of is a very popular game. Um, it's many people uh, have this. Maybe it's their number one board game of all time. Uh, probably the, the, I mean, I would guess, well, it depends how you describe popularity, but one of the most popular games of this designer uh, and mm. publisher and publisher. whatever they are. There you go. Uh, this is from Stonemaier Games. This is going to go to Scythe. Yes, the glorious Scythe left my collection. I'm going to be giving it an 8 out of 10. Um, because Scythe is a very good game. Is it Scythe or Scythe? Do you pronounce the... Is it? The... I guess you could do it the way. I usually would say Scythe, I think. Okay, but... yeah, yeah. I like that better. It kind of rolls off the tongue. Scythe. Yeah, you know? rolls in the fan. Rolls in the family. Smash, grab it. Um, Scythe is a very fun game. I like... I would love playing a game as a Scythe right now. Um, It has a lot of really fun... Uh, fun things to it. Uh, I... You know what's always the first thing that comes to mind that's fun about Scythe is the adventure cards. <laughs> Going yeah, you and get getting, a fun get, choice. Getting a draw those. Those are always so exciting and the artwork's amazing and it's always cool. The the choices are so different and, and get you cool stuff. But the uh I mean it's a really interesting uh I mean, there's probably some board game term for kind of the the blending of it kind of, you know, is this Euro kind of hybrid game. It's like a hybrid game of uh, you know, obviously you're it's a very euro game in terms of this board in front of you and you're you know moving these cubes and upgrading and stuff but but there's also area control and really interesting thing is the whole thing where you're like producing resources but they're governed like you have to like you don't own them (laughs) you have to protect them which is interesting also can be kind of brutal if like you i i found the time i played side that i don't love that feeling <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in that type of game. you're like terrified that someone's gonna come take all your resources um and whatnot um but a really interesting game i mean with the i love the boards in front of you of the whole uh whenever you you get a like move a cue i don't know if it's there's some way to upgrade where you move a cube from kind of the bottom uh, up to the top. And it's like a, you're like upgrading two things at once, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's another example of a game where you have, you know, four actions. And so I believe it's four and you just have to take, one um, and I, I always one. love that in games, just like simple, like, but how mm-hmm. do you use those to kind of the best of your ability and whatnot? Um, and so I, yeah, it all comes together and is a really 
a really just a lot of cool things happening. A couple things from just the times I've played it. One, I always feel a little underwhelmed at the end of the game, and I don't know why. It's like I I think it's going to deliver this bigger moment or feeling than it does. Well, I, the, it's probably probably the table presence. Like it, it's like it's telling you that it's going to give yeah, you this I mean, certain it's kind this of experience. Big beautiful board with these mechs and these like it's just this big thing and and it's like I play the game and I'm like I'm having fun and then it then it gets to the end and then it ends and I'm like yeah that was fun mm-hmm. that was but it wasn't like wow that was awesome like i i never at the end of a game of scythe was like talking about these like memorable moments and and this exhilarating feeling it was just like yeah that was that was a good game um a game i could play again an eight out Mm -hmm. of ten you know it's like that that was good and and what's tough is like that's i mean this category i mean gosh you at least have to be a nine out of ten i mean these are the these are the top uh kind of games uh that for us that we're playing. And so it was, it's always not a great feeling when a game just isn't quite delivering what you're um, expecting it to deliver. The other um, thing that I had with it. And again, that may this totally, I'm sure there's expert scythe players that are like, this is how you block that. Or this is, there were just Mm -hmm. multiple times playing where I found it got into like a one players just running and, grabbing advent like running all got some extra movement and is flying around and grabbing all the adventure tokens and getting all those i don't know it just it it was just and it's like okay so we're not we're kind of not fighting but then we are and yeah i don't know it's it it was one that i was always so excited to play like man i was excited to pull outside and I don't think I ever walked away from a game of Scythe like fully satisfied with it, like delivering what I was mm-hmm. hoping it would. And uh, and that's a that's a hard realization. So the hope now mm-hmm. is the you know I always like to re- re- kind of replace games, yeah. see if a game can maybe fill it better. So the new one that we'll we'll see. Stay tuned. But uh, with Dwellings of Eldervale, you know some people say there's you haven't, you haven't played it yet. Have haven't you? played it yet. No, that's a recent acquisition. Um, some people say you know there's they're very different games, but there's there's some similarities. One yeah. thing I'm hoping for, my wife was not a fan of Scythe really at all, um, and I think there might be a chance she maybe will we'll like see. this one more. We'll see. Yeah. So I feel like the the category of like hybrid games is really hard because they fall into this category where certain players might want there to be more of the combat Mm -hmm. side of it. Yeah. And then other players wish there wasn't as much like you're taking these two realms that usually people really like one or the other and kind of blending them, which is just difficult. And there's some people that that's going to be their favorite type of game. Yeah. It's like either. Yeah. It's either your favorite game or you're just kind of left like, uh, hmm. yeah. Nice. There you go. That's all I got. Uh, yeah, I've got an I've got a popular around. one, but very different reasons. I feel like that. I'm yeah. This is yeah, another uh, controversial, for controversial. But I will say this is a game that honestly probably is not the right game for most people. Yeah, um, but for the right groups, it's like the greatest game ever. I mean, there's lots of people that this is. I'm their sad I didn't get to try top it game. Around. That honestly is probably the thing I'm most sad about getting it. Is I, I was can't like, believe it been you nice did it before try. I got to try it. But the thing is, even if I, you know, we game together so infrequently, are yeah, actually, we really going to spend been, the yeah. time to play a game that I think I'm going to get rid of? Especially this, this one. This is Root. I'm giving Root an 8 out of 10. Root made my top 50 this last year and we did it. And I think I specifically she said... lied. Yeah. No, I specifically said I was like, this is really preliminary. I could see this being a game that goes up for me. I could see this being a game that drops out of my collection. Wow. The the you latter turned out to went. be true. <laughs> um Root is an it's a fascinating design. It's a highly asymmetrical game that despite looking very cute, is very much like a war game jockeying for position, race mm. for points. And it's very fascinating the way that diff- these different factions interact and the board state can evolve. Um it does mean it's a very difficult game to teach, you know, because you have to teach four different games and not just like here, you need to understand how yours works. 
But if you're going to strategize and really enjoy the strategic landscape of the game, you really have to understand everybody else's faction. Mm -hmm. Like you can't know if the Woodland Alliance is doing well over there. If you don't have like an understanding of like how that faction works and what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's hard because for you to get the experience you really want out of it, you're going to have to play multiple times with the same group. I had gotten to this. I, I've played it twice now and I got it with different groups. So Come I got it to the Ryan. table now with a new, well, they were like years apart to with completely different situations, but um, introduced it to a group, um, you know, and it was, it was a fine first play, but you could tell that you're like, we're missing out on what this could be. Because mm -hmm. none of us are comfortable enough with all the factions to really feel like we we understand what's happening. But I found like, man, the work to get it to the table with the same group to work to get that experience and with like how often it would get to the table, like it wouldn't be super close together, most likely. So, so I'd likely have, have to, to be remembering everything. rules myself. Um, so that was gonna just make it really, really yeah. hard. And I just realized. I would have to love it mm -hmm. for me to be like, I'm going to keep it around. Cause there are games that I would say I have yeah. to fall into a category of very hard to get to the table. I need a specific group, mm -hmm. but because they're, you know, I really love it in a specific niche. I keep them. Um, and I realize I'm like fine on route. And, and part of that is probably it's, it's very much a, you know, area control, um, confrontational game which tends to not be my favorite type of game i have a lot of games that i like in that category mm -hmm. but it's usually a, a notch down um and i just like didn't feel like i was wanting to like intentionally schedule the next session of it because it was like um uh, there might just be other games <laughs> i'd rather yeah play um so yeah it's one that i just realized you know what i think i just got to say goodbye to it there are some other games i'm eyeing um that maybe fall into that category of very asymmetric and require you know a r tough rules teach one that comes to mind is hegemony the leader class Ooh, of victory in recent look, years that one looks um, cool that i think intrigues me a little bit more than root i really um, want to play that one but who knows i may, maybe i end up getting it and getting rid of it for the exact same Sell reason it to me um, for a steep discount Yes. Uh, but there you go. Roots, yeah. 8 out of 10. Yeah. Um, one I would be happy to play again. It's like It would be fun to play with a group that uh, knows it a little uh, bit better. You might get whooped. Um, probably would get whooped. Um, it also is a game that's very much a... Uh, you're there more for the journey than the ending, I feel like, because mm. if everybody understands the game, you can definitely pull back, you know, attack the leader, and like it kind of self-balance, and it's a race to 30 points. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just going to be like somebody pops out as the winner, like not necessarily who played the best. So you're mm -hmm. much more there for just the interesting journey along the way, which again is fine, but it doesn't tend to be my favorite kind of game. Yeah. Um, those ones. So nice. There you go. Root eight out of 10 trash. I, I've got the last one too. Oh, yep. look at me. Look at you, uh, this is a very different reason for getting rid of this game. Uh, this is a game that I really love. We've had many good memories yes, of this. This dates back a long ways. This is Ghost Stories, which I give a strong 8.5 out of 10. And it is only leaving the collection because it has been replaced by its sequel, essentially, which is Last Bastion. Um, and we've talked, I know in some previous videos, we've talked a little bit about how this happened. It was basically had ghost stories with the played many, many games of ghost stories, ended up getting the white yes. moon expansion, liked it, but then kind of realized, man, this is adding length and complexity that almost feels like yeah, it's pulling away a little into bit. A different little. Yeah. There, different yeah. category. And like kind of took away from some of what we just loved about the core formula. So it was like, okay, well let's just play base ghost stories again. Well, once we were there, I remembered that there's a new version of Ghost Stories that I hadn't considered before because it doesn't have the expansion. Mm -hmm. So I kind of reinvestigated that, really kind of liked some of the changes that they made, and went ahead and pulled the trigger on it. And we both uh, are in agreement that it is a really nice, yes. just like 1.1 version. Like it really is pretty close to Ghost Stories. Yeah. It's, not, it's not like it elevated it up. Even a rating, I don't think. Like, I probably rate both an 8.5. Mm. I have to play Last Bastion more. 
Um, but it's a lit, you know, if I had to pick one to own, I pick last bash. Oh yeah, um, for sure. With just some of those, um, changes. So it's, you know, it was with a little bit of sadness that ghost stories, one of the first cooperative games in our collection, a very loved copy. So many exciting moments with those dice, um, sent it out to hopefully another home that will love it. Like we did. They don't know the, (laughs) yeah. The the pieces show it a little bit. (laughs) When I was getting ready to sell, I was like, okay, this thing's been loved. This thing's been loved. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll live on with last bastion, creating some new memories in a similar space. Mm. Um, definitely a game I recommend checking out. Personally, I would recommend last bastion. If you want to check out one in that, uh, yeah, that series. Um, so occasionally we get some of those on this list. That's less of a culling because, oh, yeah. you know, we're tired of it or whatever. And more of it, something just kind of naturally replaced it. Yeah. Yeah. But Hey, I mean, that's, that's, it's surprising. Cause you know, ghost stories obviously was, uh, is, is one of our favorites, but the fact they came along, we're able to make some good tweaks and enough where, you know, obviously you say same rating, but obviously it was enough for you to say, I'm going to go buy this instead. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's in my DNA that like, if I have a version of game and I know there's a game that I like this much more, that's like the same I'm, game. It's like, well, what, I want to make sure I own the one I like. This yeah, much more. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I was able to, so because I had the ghost Wars expansion, I was able to sell it for, you know, a reasonable, there you go. Reasonable amount. Recoup. Try to keep this hobby going <laughs> without breaking the bank. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, and if you want to keep this hobby going for us, go uh, buy <laughs> yeah. some of these games through those links <laughs> below. <laughs> Support the channel. Yeah. Help us uh, get try more games. Make more content. There you go. Uh, well, there you go, Ryan. Uh, those are our uh, games that left our collection July through December 2023. Stay tuned. Every six months we plan on doing this. Uh, who knows? Maybe we uh, hope you one watch of- some videos in between them. But you know, <laughs> if this is your jam, you <laughs> can come back. I for only it. I only watch cold videos. That's uh, yeah. that's all I watch. Uh, yeah. So those are those are ones that left our collection. July, December. 2023. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, kind of hearing some thoughts on games that didn't stick around in our collections, you can check out the video here of us doing this six months ago and talking about some of the games. I think we actually talked about quite a few more games um, in that video. Otherwise, there's another video recommendation here and we will see you in the next one.